If you've seen my last video, you'll probably think it's a little... Yeah. But I've had loads of you guys message me, giving me feedback about it. So this time, let's hope. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Hellblaster from the Ultramarines chapter. But for visual interest, I'm going to be painting him with a red plasma go. It's usually blue. First of all, it'll be a huge help to you if you make sure you build your model into sub-assemblies. And when you do, it's critical you make sure each part fits together correctly before you move on to the next step. Now we're going to be pinning our models to make them easier to hold. So to do this, you can grab a piece of wire like this one. This is stainless steel TIG welding wire. It's about a mil thick. You can get it from various places like a screw fix or a harbor freight, but if you know a welder, they can have tons of it lying around. So that's one of them. Then you'll need a candle, any kind of small flame, and all you want to do is just heat the end of the wire up ever so slightly on a nice area of the model to pin it. I'm going to use the base of his foot here because I've got the whole length of the leg behind it. And then you just want to press the wire in gently, wait a few seconds for the plastic to set, and as it cools, you have a nice strong bond, strong enough to support the model. And then it's just a case of trimming the wire to suit, do the same on the backpack, the arms and the head, and you're ready to paint. So, it's time to base coat. I'm going to be spraying mine with McCrag Blue Spray, but if you want to do it the traditional way of base coating it with black and then brushing the base colour on, that's not a problem either. It'll all work fine. Now I'm going to admit, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to prepping things, so I've actually made things faster for myself. I base coated the arm and the backpack with lead belcher, masked off the gun and that cable, and then I've sprayed the blue over that just because I don't want to be base coating everything silver. So this just makes everything a little bit quicker. We're going to get the brushes out for the first time. Now first of all, you're going to make a 50-50 mix of Cantor Blue and Black. Now I'm using a bad and black here just because it was closest to hand, but any black you got, it'll be fine. And you want to apply this all over the lower faces on the model. You can see I've slapped on under the knees, inside the ankle, under the hips. Basically, any area that's facing downwards, you just want to cover that with this mixture. And then when you're finished, you'll be thinking to yourself, what? hell am I watching this guy's video for? This looks terrible, but it's all part of the plan. Just bear with me, trust the process, you can be as sloppy as you want on this stage, because now we're going to bring that base colour back with a dry brush. I'm sure you've heard of dry brushing before, but if you haven't, you need to take a nice soft brush like this one. I'm actually using an eyeshadow brush I picked up from a pound shop. And then, with a small blob of paint on some tissue paper, just work the paint into the bristles, doing it round little circles, and work it all back out again until you're left with a really dry brush with hardly any paint on it. And then you're just going to pass this brush all over the model, doing downward strokes only, and that's just going to replicate light hitting all the upper surfaces and keep that blue mixture lying in the shadows. And as it's going on, you can see it's really blending those shoulder blades like it's got the high points on the top of the shoulders, blending it right into that dark shadow we laid all over. And obviously you're going to want to do the same on the backpack and on the arms. But when you are doing these areas, obviously you want to be a little bit careful you stay away from those silver areas you base coated earlier. I mean, you can wash it in afterwards, but it's easier if you just sort of be real neat and careful around it as you can. And as you can see, that's left the blue of the armour looking real deep, real defined. It's got nice shadows and nice highlights. Edge highlighting is something a lot of people find really hard to do well. And it can be a good effect when it works. But if you do a bad job of it, it's going to ruin a lot. But I feel if you do it this way, it makes things slightly easier for you. And also adds a nice bit of battle damage and texture into your models as you're going along as well. So, the best way I can suggest you go about this method is if you start out with quite a fine detail brush. All I'm using here is a 3 0, but any kind of small detail brush would be fine. And then, as this is blue armour, we're going to have some thin Calgar blue. It's not too thin, just add a tiny, tiny amount of water just to give it an easy application. And then, just twist the tip of the brush as you dip it into the paint and keep a nice sharp point. And then, all you want to do is just gently stip your way around all the edges on the armour. Painting little lines, little blobs of paint, and that's just going to simulate wear and chips all over everywhere. 
I suppose if you think of like a forklift truck, for example, I mean those things are just battered. And I'm sure an eight and a half foot soldier from the future is gonna have such a hard life than a forklift truck, so take that into consideration. And then as you move on to areas like the main part of the legs and the shoulders, just painting a few little scratches here and there. Go a little heavier on the scratching on areas like the centers of the knees and the elbows. If you imagine those areas, they'd be the areas worn away quite more often. So now that's the armor mostly done. So we're gonna put a bit of color into the gun now. Now I'm not gonna to put too much detail at all into this really, because the glow from the plasma is gonna be the main focal point. So the more attention you can draw there, and the more you can draw away from the gun, it'll just help sell the effect of it being a bright light glaring at you. So simply, we're just gonna paint it solid black, any old black you'd like, and then whilst we've got black on the brush, we might as well paint in all those rubber joints and the armor and the vents all over the backpack, all those places. And whilst we're on the stage of undercoating metals, you're just gonna to wanna to paint in those coils in the backpack and the gun, just make them look like copper, brass, conduit sort of things. So we'll both cut over all of these with a warp block bronze first, and then once that's dry, all we wanna do is just paint in a little highlight like along the cable here, just with hash at copper, you'll just simulate the light reflecting off the surfaces. And whilst we're on the stage of undercoating metals, you're just gonna to wanna to paint in those coils in the backpack and the gun, just make them look like copper, brass, conduit sort of things. So we'll both cut over all of these with a warp block bronze first, and then once that's dry, all you wanna do is just paint in a little highlight like along the cable here, just with hash at copper, you'll just simulate the light reflecting off the surfaces. Now hopefully, you've applied transfers onto models before, and if you have, hopefully this will be something new to you. Now one of the biggest issues people face with transfers on Marines is that they just do not want to stick to the shape of that rounded shoulder pad. So, I've got here X20A acrylic thinner from Tamiya, Tamiya? Yeah, whatever. This stuff melts transfers, so if you get a big brush and dab a generous amount over the shoulder transfer, you just wait a few seconds, grab a cotton bud, and press down flat. Don't rub it, don't wipe it, don't roll it, don't smear it, just dab it down vertically, because the thinner will turn that transfer into sticky goo. It might look sharp, but underneath the surface, that's pretty unstable until it's dried. But then, once it is dry, It'll have moulded itself all the way around that shoulder pad, leaving you a nice, crisp, smooth surface without any ripples or creases. And then, just to blend it all together with the rest of the paint, we're just going to add a few scratches here and there with Armour Crag Blue, and then that'll just look invisible under a matte varnish. Now we're finally going to build the model. To remove the parts from the pins, all you've got to do is just grab the wire with some pliers and just gently twist the model, and it should just come straight off. Now, you should be using a hobby knife or a scalpel here, but somehow I've managed to lose mine since turning the camera on. So, a Stanley blade will do. And then you just want to scrape the paint off all those areas where you want the surfaces to stick, because the glue is going to have a hard time bonding to the paint, so you're just going to get a much stronger bond if you bond plastic to plastic. And then, now it's all assembled, we add the final highlight to the armour. Just get some nice thin Fenrisian grey on that detail brush again, and just put a tiny dot on each corner of the armor panel. And that'll just act as a little highlight. And if you're running highlights up somewhere like on this leg, just put little dots running parallel all the way up one side of the leg, and your eye will naturally view that as a reflection passing through all the panels. And with that highlight down, that's the ultramarine armor complete. And as I've already shown you how to paint the armor blue, it just made sense to show you guys how to paint a sergeant, since he's the guy with the bright red contrasting helmet. So, to do so, if you've already base coated him in Mephiston Red Spray, that's brilliant. But if you haven't, I just suggest you base coat him whatever colour you want, then apply a couple of thin coats of Mephiston Red all over the whole head. Then, once that's dry, wash a coat of Null Oil over the whole head again. Just let that settle in all the recesses and all the seams. And that'll just give some nice depth and contrast in all the shadows. And then, you're going to want to bring that colour back out now. So. Using Evelson Scarlet, just painting all the raised areas, such as that Mohican vent, the forehead, and like the front areas of the face. Just 
just use that little diagram as a guide here if you're not too sure but you want to make sure you don't go all the way up to the edges because you want to leave that dark red in all those crevices and now the final stage on the red armor using the same method we did with the cow god blue just stipple on little chips and scratches all over the head with wild rider red and you don't want to go as intense as you did with the body because in reality i don't think he's going to be going around rubbing his face on everything so let's keep it all subtle as a rule sergeants have these glassy green eye lenses so with a base coat of vallejo dark green just add a tiny highlight of warp stone glow towards the center bottom of each eye lens then once that's all down wash in the lenses with normal -nor, and then once that's dried tiny dot of white to the opposite ends of the lens and that just add like a little light reflection into it painting the little bits here and there such as the neck black and that is the head and the body totally done now if you've made it this far into the video whilst watching all the way through i appreciate it but for those of you who skipped ahead time for the real reason everyone's here o s l now first of all before i get into explaining my method of osl it's probably best i start off by explaining a couple of little things and to me the main thing that sets convincing osl apart from the average attempts is just sticking to the rule of the situation the model is in most importantly the day or the night so to explain this i've got my little neon flamingo and in the daylight this side of my face remains all the colours it's meant to be, with a soft pink glow on the other. Moving the light closer makes the colour stronger and much more intense, but the other side still remains my pasty flesh tone. Move the light away, the glow dies down, and everything looks a lot more subtle. Whereas at night, however, the glow is much more intense. Move the light close to my face, and everything is illuminated in that warm pink glow, with everything not facing the light, almost non-recognizable in shadow and no matter how close or far everything is either illuminated in a shade of pink or shadow so going from what i was explaining earlier i'm going to be painting this guy to be out in the daylight so i'm going to start with some white and an airbrush i'm just going to softly spray over all of those coils and let the natural overspray of the airbrush just fog out that edge and give me a nice subtle glow then a little bit gently spill out onto the cable run to the gun and have a little bit more spray onto his wrist because obviously that's close to the light source. And then we're going to tint that white glow red using Vallejo Gaming Red. Now, the best thing about these inks is that they're actually transparent. So, painting that gun totally black beforehand means we can spray the whole gun with red ink and it'll actually only turn the white areas red. And all those black parts of the gun will just stay black and really sell it as a warm glow. But now we've got to re-brighten the core of that light source. So with white paint or white ink, if you prefer, anything you find works best for you, just paint over the whole of those coils, making sure you get right up towards the edges and into the gaps between each fin, just to give you a real nice, strong white base coat. And this part is key. This is Green Stuff World Fluorescent Red. It comes really thick out of the bottle. So you want to thin it slightly to consistency of milk. Not too thick, not too runny and just spray a light coating over the whole of the coils you've just painted red and that'll tint them a nice fluorescent pink glow. And just remember, this paint isn't transparent this time, so you do need to be careful where you aim it because it will tint all those black areas of the red pink if you're not careful. And we're nearly there. Just do one final layer of that same white again. This time, just move even smaller with your brush strokes and just pick up the raised edges of each individual fin. And then, once that's dry, just the slightest pass over with that fluorescent red again and that'll just tint those white cores back into the pink colour family and just blend it all together. Now I want to show you my favourite hack. Yeah, actually my second favourite. I'll save my favourite for the next video. This is the Pilot Super Colour Gold Marker. And for Ultramarines, they're just fantastic. They're liquid gold in a pen. But you want to varnish your model before applying and then just apply these over the top and it'll actually look like you've got gold plated parts. And with that, we're complete. Now I've based this guy with a Mars Effect base. There's the orange sand and the blue paint in the armor. They just contrast each other perfectly. And honestly, I think he's looking fantastic. I've also painted up a sergeant with a pistol from the Recruit Edition box and you've got to agree, that glow is convincing. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and it's been helpful. 
hopefully you'll follow along for the next ones. I've got plenty of videos left in the pipeline. My next one, I think I'm probably going to do my grimdark green glow I use on my own Necrons. My name's been Paul, you can message me in the comments or on Reddit. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you here for the next one.